Okay, so let's jump into this video and start talking about working with their E38 and E67s in their speed density operation. So in the previous video, we took a look at our E40 example, and we found that that had a pretty basic VE table similar to the Gen 3. Now, these E38 and E67 PCMs are gonna be completely different. They're gonna be using something called a virtual volumetric efficiency. And we're gonna find if we take a look at the calibration file, there's gonna be all kinds of zones and coefficients that are gonna be corresponding to the speed density operation. And the HP Tuner software takes all of this data that we can't really edit and work with. It's gonna be putting into a calculator that is gonna assemble it into a three-dimensional table that we're able to actually edit and make changes to, and then we can write it back into the file. There's a whole process for that. And we also have on some of the operating systems that we're gonna be converting it or have the ability to convert it to a two bar operating system. It's gonna get rid of the virtual volumetric efficiency altogether. I'm gonna be walking you through both examples here so you know how both are gonna work and all the details that we need to know along with that. So without further wait, let's jump into the video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started here. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our speed density tuning inner E38 and E67 PCMs. We're gonna be finding this is a bit different than the E40 PCM. It was more like a Gen 3 doing our programming. This is definitely gonna be completely different. We're gonna find two different methods that we can implement our speed density depending on the operating system we're working with. So E38 or E67, we'll find they all have different operating systems based on the year, make, and model that we're working with. Some will have an enhanced two bar ROM that we can do our conversion, and some aren't going to be allowing us to do that, and we'll find that more operating systems here with our controllers are going to be forcing us to tune this in a virtual volumetric efficiency. So this is going to be a little bit of an odd concept. I'll be going over this in this video. Then we'll be taking a look in another video at actually going into our VCM scanner, going in and working with our virtual VE and how that process is going to go. But I just want to introduce the concepts now in this video and things that you need to keep in mind. So let's jump in here and take a look at this virtual VE. This is again going to be the most traditional way you're going to be working with doing your speed density tuning across all of the operating systems. You're going to find that again, that's, that enhanced speed density operating system is only going to be available on some operating systems and some years and models. So it's not going to be found across all of them. So it's important that we need to understand how to work with virtual VE. So let's jump in here to engine. Let's go in here from general to idle to airflow and then move from the general tab to dynamic to speed density. Now this is the, the portion where we actually do our speed density tuning. If we take a look at this, this is gonna look completely foreign. If we click on constant, we're gonna find that we have these odd tables here. We're gonna find four of them. So manifold switched open or closed, and then we have displacement on demand switched open or closed on the manifold. So we'll find here, we have four different rows of values. We can see we have zone zero all the way up here to zone 29. So we have 30 zones to deal with, and we see the values in the table here are pretty high values, 900, we can see some at 1800, 2600. So we see the values are kind of all over the place and uh, they don't make any sense. And we click through some other tables here. We find they're gonna be based on map pressure. Again, we find some odd values in the table here. We find zero to zone 29. So we find 30 total zones. Again, they're all gonna be based on the different conditions we're operating in. So if we click through all these tables, we're gonna find all of these areas of operation and they're called coefficients. And these are gonna be making up, if we added them all together and doing calculations in the background, it's gonna be adding up and giving us our actual volumetric efficiency calculation. We are not able to edit these tables. We're gonna be nearly impossible to do anything with them. So we're gonna be taking a look at a different method to implement our speed density tuning. That's gonna be known as virtual volumetric efficiency. So the software actually has a virtual VE table built into it that we're able to navigate and work with these coefficients. It's gonna be assembling the coefficients into a table that we can actually recognize and program. So we'll jump up here to edit. We're gonna go into virtual volumetric efficiency. So if I click on this, we're gonna find this table opens up here. And this is gonna 